A lot of people want to speak at a TEDx so that they can get their big idea and their big message out into the world. Now these TEDx's have applications and those applications are an opportunity to make sure that there is nothing missing from your message because those applications are usually really, really short. This week on What's Missing From This Message, we're going to look at Kathy Klutz Guest's application to TEDx Spokane, and we're going to find exactly what will make her application even stronger, a strong narrative through even those very short answers that she has to give. Let's take a look at Kathy's TEDx Spokane application. She's calling it the power of being unapologetic. That's a good, strong TEDxy title. Uh, TEDx loves these uh, really strong descriptive titles that have a little bit of mystery to them. The power of is a, is a pretty standard structure for them, like the power of introverts, for instance. And she's got here the power of being unapologetic. So I read that as the power of being not sorry about things. Uh, and in fact, that may be a, that might even be a smoother title, the power of being not sorry, uh, because it, it's, it's a little bit more unexpected. It's a little bit more unfamiliar and yet simpler words than unapologetic. So a thing to consider. Um, she's really talking about here, I think about being, as she says, meant as authentically. So living without filters or living without being afraid to completely own and be proud of who you are. That's what I'm reading from this. I also know Kathy quite well, so I'm guessing. With the application itself, most TEDx applications have a series of questions like this. And a lot of times they're expecting you to answer these questions succinctly, concisely, clearly, interestingly. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they're looking to have happen in a very small amount of space. And typically they are, in fact, limiting your words or character count. So some of the things that I, as an organizer, always looked for was, did I get an answer to the question I was looking for? Uh, did it make sense if I didn't know anything about the idea? Uh, were there use of language that most people would understand? Was there something that was unfamiliar, unexpected, or obviously new about what we're talking about here? And importantly, though, I don't know how many TEDx organizers would say this out loud. I'm actually reading to see how much you understand about what I am looking for as the organizer on behalf of the TEDx audience that I serve. So with all of that in mind, let's take a look at what Kathy's looking at. The first thing we're looking at here right up on top is the fact that she's got, uh, they've, they're asking for this one, the big small idea, one sentence. This is very, very common in TEDx applications where they wanna see your big idea in one crisp, clean sentence. I will tell you that most TEDx ideas die right here because most people can't do it in one sentence or can't do it in one sentence that meets all the criteria that I just talked about. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about what Kathy has here. So she has as her one sentence that being ap unapologetic isn't a power available only to the most confident among us. Rather, the confidence to be more unapologetic is a byproduct of small choices to show up and be seen. So nice and clear, uh, I, as an organizer, I might argue that the semicolon is the fusing together of two sentences that would normally otherwise be two sentences. So um, there's probably some work she can do here to get this into one sentence. Um, but let's look at it through the lens of something that I want for, by a means I didn't expect, which is kind of my magic formula for a one sentence explanation for an idea. Um, <clears throat> So the, the first thing is that I don't see a result in this description, meaning I don't see something that I, as an audience member or as an organizer, am actively looking for right now. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what she means out of the top, uh, off the top of the application about being unapologetic. Like I said, I know Kathy, so I'm reading into this. But I think somebody who is reading this for the first time would look at that and go, well, maybe I don't want to be unapologetic. Maybe I, I believe in being polite, right? So... There's a, there's a danger here in the fact that it's not immediately clear what it is that she is offering, what, what question this particular talk answers. So if it's, 
I think there's some elements here because I think many people do want to show up as themselves, be seen and be appreciated as themselves. And so that might be a thing to move forward to say, to, to really focus on as, as the outcome of the talk. Um, the other thing that's here is, okay, so if that's what I'm going to get from listening to this talk is a, is a way to show up and be seen without having to uh, be afraid or apologize for it then I want to see something that uh, I haven't heard before when it comes to what the what Kathy's approach is to doing that. Right now, that's reading as small choices. And I think those small choices are important. But remember that many TEDx organizers see things like this over and over and over again. And so we have to give a, just a little bit more information about what those small choices are. So I, I think there's real power in the fact that she's talking about being unapologetic. Given the fact that Kathy has a, has a, a comedy background, there's a potential to play with this sorry, not sorry kind of idea. Uh, and I wonder if the, the real idea of this is that the best way to show up and be seen is to be not sorry about anything that we show uh, about ourselves. So you see what I'm saying there, that what we're trying to do is get, get, a, get an outcome that people want, recognize and want and give some kind of twist on how you're going to get there. So I think the elements are here. I think we just need to surface them a little bit more strongly. Next question that they're asking her. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say about this, that this description right now doesn't answer the, the promise of a title that says the power of being unapologetic or the, the power of being not sorry. Um, the, this is, it sounds like it's more of um, how to gain the confidence, not a talk about where the power of being not sorry or being unapologetic comes from. So I would encourage Kathy to make sure that those two match up, that we want to make sure that the, the title matches what the idea is. Uh, that's not a huge deal. That's not, as far as I'm concerned as a TEDx organizer, that's not a deal killer, uh, but that's just a thing to look out for is to make sure that your title matches what the, what the idea is. Okay, let's move on to why am I passionate about it? So this is where the organizers are trying to figure out what your connection is. I will also tell you that subtly they're trying to suss out whether or not that you are trying to use this for your own personal gain. Um, and depending on how they ask that it either is or is not uh, a more obvious thing that they're trying to find out about here. Most of the time, I think TEDx organizers really do know, want to know why you're passionate about it. And more often than not, they're looking for that personal connection to the topic. That the, this is a this is an idea that you can't not talk about, uh, rather than just one that you think you should talk about. So to that end, it's a really powerful opportunity for you to tell a story about yourself if you're given the characters and if you're given the words. I mean, keep it to be a short story. Um, so this is my example here with with Kathy is that she's got that element. She took it took her years to choose herself, even while being scared in order to show up more unapologetically. Little choices over time transformed her confidence, her relationships and her ability to be more fully seen for me. I want that for us all. This is one of those opportunities we've talked about before where even though it's about you and the next question is about the audience, it's, I would suggest she flip this a little bit and say many people experience this state, like where they feel like they can't be seen, they feel like they're going to be punished for who they really are, or who they really want to be. Um, and the, the, by flipping that and starting with that, then you're really speaking more to the organizer and the audience and then coming out from that and say, well, that was me or that was an experience I had as well. Uh, this is another place where I would love if she's got the word count or the character count to be a little bit more specific. So um, what were those little choices over time? What were those things? Tell me how you're getting there. Uh, because between this and the first and the first answer with these small choices, I don't really have a sense of what these small choices are. Now, the danger of that is what we're left is what I often refer to as what could be perceived as a fear and baby steps talk where the big barrier to getting what you want is that you're afraid of it and that the answer is that you take little baby steps to solve it. Um, that's a very common theme in ideas and talks. And I know that that's not what Kathy's talking about here. So I want to make sure that she's adding those kinds of specifics that make sure that it doesn't get read that way. 
So um, I think the passion piece is important and I think I like where she's going with it, just a little bit more specificity, both about her personal example to that. Be vulnerable, be not sorry, be unapologetic. Like show me that you're doing exactly what this talk is about, um, both about your connection to it and about what those small choices are. Next question that Spokane asks is why others should care. Uh, this is, we all want to be fully ourselves. Many of us make painful choices daily about how much of ourselves we show and to whom. That makes us less free, less happy, more invisible to others who might be our people. So I know that I said before that we want a little bit of this in the previous answer as counterintuitive as that is. And that means that forces a little bit more thinking about a deeper, deeper application about why others should care. I love what Kathy's saying here. I think she's got a great, great perspective on it and that this is a source of pain for a lot of people. And Kathy really wants to address that pain through this potential TEDx talks, uh, tr through this potential uh, talk, excuse me. So um, the one thing in here that I think would make that stronger is that I don't know what our people means. Uh, so without any context, other other places in this answer. And again, I know she's constrained by space. Uh, it kind of, it comes off as this new note that I don't know what it means. And w that those little things are, are the little things that will get an organizer who's reading a ton of these to go, well, I don't really understand. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it or I, I'm, we're not going to move this forward. And when I know there's an idea as powerful as Kathy's is here, I would hate to see that happen. So here's what I would suggest. Uh, move some of this we want to be fully ourselves piece up to why she cares because that's the kind of surface first thing that most people would pair, care about. And then when she's answering this question, why others should care, I think this is a point to develop that our people point a little bit more. It also allows her to continue a narrative through the first through the first couple of answers through this one. Um, and that's important. Remember that the organizers are reading it as a narrative document. So the more that you can you know, tie these answers together, the stronger this application is going to be. All right, next question, what the audience will take away. Uh, people who show up unapologetically aren't necessarily born not giving up mm, about what others think. Instead, many of us gained unapologetic conf confidence over time in the smaller, vulnerable decisions to let part of ourselves be seen. It's possible for us all. So a couple things here. Uh, one is that this is still assuming that people want to be not sorry. And, and, then, um, and that's because that's how it's written, show up unapologetically. Um, and I think that there's just, that's one of those places where flipping some of the language there and anchoring it more on that commonly accepted goal right now of showing up, being seen uh, for who we are and appreciated for that um, is important. Um, I think that if the big point of this talk is that it's possible, I'm not sure that that is, that's as strong as this could be. Um, I think we want to, we want to be able to practice that. So if, if there's an opportunity for Kathy to be able to say that she's going to do something in the talk that shows people that it's possible for them, that would make this even stronger. Um, just because just hearing that it's possible doesn't always make people realize it's possible for them. And, and a real focus for TEDx talks is, and TEDx organizers is making sure that the audience feels like they can do something for themselves. That's much more likely to have that idea spread as we talk about. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out about that point right now is that as written as uh, this is that it's possible that uh, that we want to do this and really it's just small steps that get in the way. Um, it makes me wonder if if there are other talks already out there in the TED or TEDx universe on not being sorry or unapologetic, you know, not being unapologetic or being authentic or those kinds of things. This is a piece of advice I would give to anybody wanting to apply to a TEDx is do the research to find out what else is out there already so that you can position your idea sharply against what's already there. Because remember, this idea is hugely important to you and it is the thing that you have been focused on if you're thinking about doing one of these talks. But these organizers see hundreds of ideas, not just the ones coming in for their own organization and their own event, but also for 
uh, f across all the things that they're looking at, all these other TEDx ideas, all these other things that they're reading, all the things that they're reading all the time to curate. That's why it's so important when you've got a great strong idea like Kathy has is to make sure that you're doing the work to get the specifics in there that allow the strength of that to really, really shine. Let's take a look at the fourth question. This is a new one to me. I haven't seen this on a TEDx application before, a long-term community outcome. She writes here that so much pain and unhappiness are caused by reducing ourselves to fit in. That renders our true selves invisible. Imagine the ripples of transformation at work, in our communities, and in the world if we showed up more unapologetically to be seen and to see others. So I think where she's going with this is that there are, there are effects beyond just our personal experiences and our personal world when these barriers exist uh, between us, when these barriers of constantly being uh, questioning whether or not one should apologize for, one, for who one is. And Kathy, I know, based on what I know about her, knows that there's huge power in, in owning that and in having that bravery and having that willingness to come forward and, and, and be yourself and, and the effects that that can have. I think that there's opportunity here to make this even stronger by focusing on that second ripple more, meaning it's less about just, hey, what if we get seen, but that there's important things that happen in our community and in our society when, when, when people self-censor, when there isn't somebody out there being unapologetic that gives us a standard bearer, as by the way, Kathy absolutely is, uh, that, there's, that, there, that we lose something as a whole, not just individually, but as a society, when we don't get to hear all voices simply because they want to make sure that nobody gets offended. Which, by the way, being offensive might be a fun, fun twist on this as well. So I don't know. But um, so the bio here, this is a this is I love Kathy. She's fantastic. Um, and the bio, I think, is a good standard piece. Uh, we've talked a lot about bios before, so I'm not going to focus too much on this one. But let's make sure while we're reading it that it, it speaks to the things that she's talked about so far. So she's leading off with the fact that she's a former Silicon marketing, a Silicon Valley marketing executive and a trained improviser. She combines business and comedy backgrounds to help people unleash more of their creative superpowers. So this is one of those places where uh, she hasn't talked about creativity elsewhere in the, in the application. And so I would unleash more of their put something in there that really speaks to the idea she's talking about here. Um, her clients include Cisco Sys uh, Systems, Amazon, and Kaiser Permanente. Um, I think that that's, I think that that kind of credi credi credibility and credentials important works really well. Uh, she's a founder of Keeping It Human. Uh, she's, I love these additional credentials that she's put in. Uh, uh, she's, she, her book yeah, has been a must read for chief marketing officers. Uh, again, this is reading a bit more like uh, the bio that would be suitable if, 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 Kathy was speaking at a marketing conference. And so I'm, I'm wondering if there are other things that she can pull from her background in this paragraph or other ways to position what she's talking about here so it more directly focuses on the, her credibility to speak about that particular topic that she's, that she's submitted. Uh, her credentials are incredibly impressive. Her MA and MBA from Stanford and Berkeley, um, where she studied for comedy and, uh, so she's got this, and then that last little bit of, of personality where she's thrilled her 11 year old still thinks that she's funny um, and performs. So this is one of those things where I know it's hard, super hard with these applications when there's, there's so little space, but this, we, because there's so, so little space, that's, that's why when you're writing it, anyone's writing this, we need to make sure that as much as you can, you are tying that narrative through every single short answer. That is the best way to keep your application strong. And in this case, make sure that the strength of your idea, which is already so great here, really, really shines through. My thanks to Kathy for submitting her TEDx application, for getting some women here on what's missing from this message. If you have a short form piece of content that you want to see what's missing from it, email me at redthreadme at tamsinwebster.com. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to subscribe.